Hello. Hey, Hello. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Hi. We're live now. Jason, Melanie, how are you? Doing great. Happy to be back. Great to see you guys again. I was just chomping on an apricot or chocolate covered apricot and oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys know really. <laughs> really quickly. Um, you guys, thank you so much for joining us for our second deer and charcuterie pairing with the meat cheese board. Mm -hmm. Melanie is with us. And of course, Jason, our head brewer, who's been, uh, you know, setting up all these pairings for the past um, nine weeks, I think. So we're excited to bring back the one we did the very first week um, with kind of a fresh new flavor and an additional element to it. Um, really quick before we would get going, uh, we wanted to take a moment and use our platform and our voice to address what's going on around us. We at Denver Beer Co. in Salutria, Colorado do not stand for racism of any kind. During the past few months, as the pandemic has altered the world we live in, we've been amazed and grateful beyond words for the love and support Denver has shown us. We wanted to take a moment and pass that support forward to the Black community. We believe that Black Lives Matter and we wanna share a few ways that you guys can help support. Um, 303 Magazine uh, this week posted an article featuring over 200 local Black owned companies that you guys can support. I added it to the bottom of the email you received about two hours ago with the menu and information for this live stream. Please take a moment, pick up that article, check out all those amazing local black ran companies and support where you can. Lastly, as a team, we hope to continue to educate ourselves, volunteer, donate, use our voice and our platform to be anti-racist. Our goal is to promote love, community and diversity. And we encourage and hope you guys can join us in this. Um, Melanie, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add. Well, I love everything you just said. And I wholeheartedly agree. And as Cheese Me Board, if anybody follows us socially right now, you'll notice that we're not posting any content to try to, we're not posting any distractions. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're going to remain silent. Me, myself, and as the business owner, gonna continue to educate and support and read and donate and learn and I'm not going to ask what I can do. I'm going to make my own plan, educate myself, and help where I can. Because I know that I can. And we all can. And so I, I love everything you just said. 100% agree. And uh, we're all feeling a weird vibe. But hopefully, like I said, I don't want this to be a distraction, but at least a light in your day. So hopefully that's what we're doing tonight. Yeah, I think our, you know, our goal here today, one was to use our platform with this event. Hopefully anyone that listening can hear that and know that, you know, we are anti-racist and we do not, we want to, uh, do not support any kind of racism and we want to make sure everyone knows that. And we figured this event, everybody had, you know, pre-purchased it. They expected it to kind of go on. So we wanted, instead of canceling entirely, we wanted to use our platform in this, in this way as a way to speak to that. Um, so if anyone wants to continue the conversation, you guys all had an email from me, we can, anything you guys want to share or anything we can help with or anything, any suggestions you have for us, we're, you know, happy to listen to them. Um, and you all have my email that came through. Some of you have gotten multiple. Um, okay. So with that, uh, let's move into our first pairing yeah. and, and taste some delicious charcuterie and drink some good beer and, you know, enjoy this time together. Mm -hmm. Um, Jason, do you want to lead us into our first pairing with Princess Yum Yum? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. So this is Princess Yum Yum. This is our raspberry Kolsch. Um, this is one of the the beers that we've been brewing from uh, you know very early on in the, the days of the brewery, and it's it's currently our best selling beer. Uh, but this is a nice, easy drinking raspberry Kolsch. So uh, Kolsch is a, a German kind of summer ale. Um, and, and we take that and, and put a little bit of American twist on it by adding some fresh red raspberries. So we actually use 17 pounds of fresh red raspberries per barrel. So that's for 31 gallons of beer, we use 17 pounds of red raspberries and it really gives it that nice color, uh, nice pink color, really nice fruity raspberry nose that goes along with that German uh, fruity yeast as well. And then uh, the flavor, you get that full flavored red raspberries and 
you know, lots of fruit beers are, are pretty sweet and people think that they're very sweet. Uh, this beer is kind of uh, on the opposite spectrum of that. So we add the raspberries during fermentation. So the sugars that are in the raspberries actually get fermented. Uh, that helps to dry that beer out. Um, and the raspberries also add like a, a very nice acidity. So it's not a sour beer, but it does have a, a pretty low pH. And there is a, a nice tartness that comes along uh, with using those red raspberries. So nice, uh, easy drinking beer year round. And um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's very refreshing this time of year, uh, for sure. And um, I'll let Melanie tell us uh, the flavors of, of cheese meat board that we're going to be tasting along. Yeah. So with the Princess Yum Yum, we are going. You're going to be looking at the crumbled cheese that you have um, on your plates there. And this is an aged farmhouse cheddar. It's an English cheese. Um, it's it's a hard cheese. It's hard to slice. So at I usually when I put it on a cheese board, I will have it crumbled because it adds a really nice texture. Um, to just the visual aspect of it. Um, and that's going to be paired with a, a fig jam. You can spread it on. I'm just going to dip it in there. I think that's going to pair really nicely with this raspberry beer. And then the, the meat that we're trying is a speck. And it's a form of prosciutto. It's the same cut of meat, um, cured, salt cured in the same way, but it's actually smoked finished. Um, so you'll be able to taste. I know when I was putting all these plates together, I just could smell the smokiness of that, um, that, that cut of meat there. And so that's going to be a nice salty, fatty uh, contradiction to this really effervescent beer. So um, I'm going to stop talking and put this in my mouth. <laughs> um, this is delicious. Mm -hmm. this is my favorite thing to add with any charcuterie and this is so good. I've just been kind of in my mouth. But yeah, this cave aged cheese is awesome. Um, I love how with the Princess Yum Yum, that fattiness really cuts down the acidity of the mm -hmm. yum yum. It really transforms those flavors in your mouth. And then mm -hmm. with the salt as well, it really accentuates the raspberries. I feel like it brings it out a little bit more. That's it's a really nice combination. That's great. Mm -hmm. So good. So I think we've asked this once before another one, but for those of us who are new. I don't know, sound off in the comments. Did you, were you here for the last Shark to the Is this your first time watching? Have you joined in for others? But do you think, do we drink beer first or do we eat first or how do we do it? You know, that's, a good, that's a good question. I get that question all the time. To me, I mean, I'm a beer guy, so I'm always going to say the beer comes first. But but I do, I do like, I really like to drink the beer first and kind of, you know, get your palate accustomed to the beer. And then when you get into the food, and then go back to the beer, that's when you see the, the kind of the transformative properties of the pairings. And I, I really think that's the most interesting part to me. But I don't know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, Melanie. What do you do? Do you drink first, eat first? I think you are exactly right. I like to drink first because sometimes what you're tasting with the food completely changes the flavor of the beer on that second drink or the wine or whatever you're pairing it with. Um, so, I, I mean, it really helps whether it's complementary or contrasting. I think for these ones, we've got some real good complementary ones. But once, especially if you're going to, you know, eat this piece of cheddar cheese and it kind of melts in your mouth a little bit and then you take a sip of beer and all of those flavors come together um, and you're tasting something totally new almost when you do that. So, um, yeah. I'm not an expert. I'm just an eater and a drinker for sure. But <laughs> I think I like to... Sip, eat, sip again is my motto. <laughs> All right. Looks like everybody is laughing at the comments on the side. <laughs> Brandy said uh, that she was here for oysters and she's happy that this is already dead, which made me laugh. <laughs> I just learned last week that oysters were alive when we were shucking them and eating them. So I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. So, yeah. Yeah, fun surprise. <laughs> So, you know, the cheese and meat, not alive. Mm -hmm. um, so good. Does anybody have any questions about this meat or cheese or the pairing or Princess Yum Yum or anything else? Sound off with you a couple of questions, maybe, and then we'll keep it moving. How many people love it? So good. Who hates it? I don't think it's awesome. This. <laughs> Ooh, so there's a, there's a question question up on the screen, Melanie. I don't know if you can answer it or not, but oh, is, there, is there a definition of a farmhouse cheese or is that kind of a general term? I know, you know, in beer, 
farmhouse ales are mm -hmm. generally kind of considered like a Belgian tradition, and that's kind of an, kind of an older tradition. And there's there's some different ways uh, that beers were made. Yeah, um, in, it's in part Belgium. of the same um, aspect. It's an English style. Mm -hmm. uh, they make the cheese, so it's um, it's aged, you know, cow's milk farmhouse. I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> But it's cow's milk cheddar uh, that they age, and so it gives it just like a really, uh, like I said, crumbly texture, and then a really like pungent flavor. You don't really get that with like regular cheddar as much, unless it's extra sharp, and sometimes that's aged longer as well too to get that flavor out of there. So that's where that comes from. And is all cheddar made from cow's milk? Is that correct or no? That's no not correct. Mm -hmm. I mean. There's a million types of cheddar, so there's tons of different mixtures. It, it, um, I've had some that were like a mix of cow and sheep, and those are really good too. Um, again, a billion types of cheese, in, even, if, even if it's a cheddar or a gouda or, you know, any, any kind of area, people will do it their own way. And there's millions of creameries around too, so. Um, just because it's a cheddar doesn't mean it has to be cow's milk, but generally, I mean, this one is. <laughs> awesome. Cool. We have a, we had another question up on what's, what's the name of your company. Can you tell us just a little bit of the history of meat and cheese board? Oh, sure. So, um, I launched cheese meat board, uh, last August. Um, I, what we do is we, uh, specialize in delivery of charcuterie boxes throughout the Denver metro area. Um, we'll go a little bit further outside of the metro zone um, as well on delivery. We don't have a store location or storefront, so we don't offer pickup at this time. It's delivery only because we work out of a shared commercial kitchen. Um, but I have a example of uh, cheese charcuterie boxes. Um, this is what the small size would be. And we're also running a special uh, of two person boxes for delivery for that are great for date nights and things like that. Um, we have been doing on site events with grazing tables um, and hope to get back into that eventually when we can have more large gatherings. But in order to kind of work with what situation we're in now, we're also offering individual grazing boxes. Um, doing these pairings with you has been great and we actually uh have started doing a virtual workshop on uh, build your own charcuteries so our first one's actually going to be tomorrow uh and then we hope to do some more of those in the future as well where we will deliver you kind of a diy charcuterie kit we'll have a call like this and i can walk you through the whole process of building a beautiful charcuterie board Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. That sounds great. It's pretty fun and, and just kind of a way to pivot the business yeah. during this time. And, you know, our, our motto has always been uh, presentation without pretentiousness. We want something that is as fancy and elegant as <laughs> <laughs> one. So, oh, they need some dog treats. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, very um, cool. If I could plug something, speaking of the dog barking, uh, this week going live on our website, people will be able to order um, what we're calling cheese meat bone. And uh, I, we lovingly call it charcuterie. We've partnered with Mouthful, which is a doggy uh, treat and um, pet grooming store on Tennyson Street in Denver to provide us with a charcuterie doggy box where there's multiple treats, um, some bag and strips, some cheesy biscuits, um, some other cheesy biscuits, as well as peanut butter treats. This would be an add-on item for any human charcuterie box that you order for yourself. Um, it's gonna cost $10 and we are uh, donating a portion of all the proceeds of the doggy boxes to a, a local animal shelter called Foothills Animal Shelter. That's where I adopted my dog from. So we love them. Um, I know everybody's got some new puppies lately. So treat yourself and treat your best buddy with some cheese meat bone. That'll be available on the website ordering. Uh, the dog store is called Mouthfuls on Tennyson Street. Let's see if I can give you a picture of their 
uh, logo. I don't know how easy that is. The light's kind of in the way. Mouthfuls on Tennyson. Love them. So hopefully everybody will get some human food. Charcuterie, charcuterie. That's so awesome. I love that. That's so cool. What, what a great idea. Well, thanks. Um, that was my little plug. So we can go back to beers. <laughs> Nice. Well, I don't know if you guys are ready to move on, but I'm yeah. ready okay. Pour for this next pairing. Cucumber beer. Yeah. Devin, you in? Can't hear you. Um, yeah, there I am. There yeah. Sorry. I didn't even realize the dogs were in the backyard because they were being so quiet until somebody walked by with the dog. So now mm -hmm. they're inside. So we're good now. But I, one, I love that the, the shirt. How did you say it? With the dog char. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. I loved it. Uh, I'm going to have to get one for my dog. I love that. And it made me think of, and doing the personal meat and cheese pairings, I have a question about that. So let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it, and we're going to get into our second pairing, and then I will ask it. Uh, so, oh, who has Princess Yum Yum left? No. I have my Princess Yum Yum glass. We have these canned glasses in our tap room. Uh, which are back open now with social distancing if you need to go drink a beer in the patio this weekend. Uh, and they have these can glasses you can buy. Uh, so let's all finish our yum yums if you haven't yet and you want to. I'm going to crush mine here. <laughs> Those are cool glasses. Isn't that fun? Can glasses. I like you drink that. water and feel like you're drinking yum yum. Okay. Um, second beer, Jason, is Colorado Champions, right? The Crowler? Yep. Colorado Champions, the, the Crowler. So this is a really fun beer. This is a tribute to all the medical workers um, and the frontline workers uh, who are, are dealing with COVID right now. And as you can see on the label, this art is incredible. This is artwork done by Austin Fowler. Um, he's done some murals around Denver and he's got some national press for him. They're really incredible. He's got a bunch of, bunch of new murals that are up now as well. And uh, he was nice enough to, uh, allow us to use his art on this can. And in return, we donated some of the proceeds to Frontline Foods in Denver um, to, to help out uh, feeding some of the, the medical workers. And it's a really fun, nice beer. This is a cucumber lime lager. So um, it's a nice, easy drinking uh, lager with some fresh lime juice in there. Uh, and then just a little, little hint of cucumber that kind of brings it all together. Melanie, as I'm sure you, you know, with, uh, with you know pairing foods and, and beers, cucumber seems like a light flavor, but can actually be pretty dominant. So it's it's a little sneaky and a little tricky on the beer side. So you got you to go tread very lightly with your cucumber flavor. But um, in in this beer, I think it came out fairly balanced, and it's nice, very very easy drinking beer. So oh, you can definitely taste it, and but it's so refreshing. This is like a perfect summer patio beer. This is great. I love anything cucumber beverage. Mm -hmm. And when we came out with it, one I love it. It says Colorado Champions are as cool as a cucumber. My favorite. <laughs> Smiled ear to ear when I saw that. And then it's just so light, refreshing, and delicious. It smells so good. It really does. So, um, oh, okay. I, I was hoping we weren't going, like I said earlier to you guys, I was hoping we weren't going too cucumber pickle centric by pairing. Uh, pickles, mini cornichons with uh, a dill Havarti and the cucumber beer, but I have a feeling it's going to taste really good. Um, the dill Havarti is going to be another one of those cheeses that's just going to kind of melt in your mouth and really uh, add some like texture when you have the sip of beer after that. And then we've paired it with a mild soppressata, uh, which is a version of salami uh, that's just got a little bit extra fat that you'll see. I mean, you can see it as you're eating it, all these little white fat pockets in there. Um, just that will do the same thing that the uh, spec did with the Princess Yum Yum is just kind of mellow down the effervescence of the beer. Um, and But it will also pair really nicely so it won't taste like you're eating something so fatty. So um, we'll get into this one. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody who, like me, who's a little naive when it comes to some of these meats, mm -hmm. is the lighter one. 
with kind of the the bigger uh, white specks in it. Is that that's correct, Melanie? That's exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Melanie, I made I've been making like a little, I don't know what you would call it, like a roll here. Like, a good way to do it. I've just been kind of like sure. taking the meat and rolling the cheese and the pickle in it, or do you should and doing a bit all like a bite? That's a great idea. <laughs> I'm gonna do exactly what you're doing. Sandwich. It's like a meat roll. That was a when I was a kid. We used to have a snack that was just hard salami with a little bit of cream cheese and a pickle in it, and we'd roll it up like a taco. Yeah. I was literally gonna say that. <laughs> I actually do that as an adult, but because like when I'm trying to not eat bread all the time, I when I was like in college and I was like I can't eat bread. I wasn't really an adult, a young adult. <laughs> do turkey, cream cheese, and pickles, and like roll them up. Yeah, and like that would be my sandwich without it the bread. Unwitch, I think they're called, but whatever. Anyway, same thing here. A little different, but way better. This is the, the you can call this your like um sophisticated adult version of that if you want, although it's not that sophisticated. <laughs> it's way better. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Meat roll. I'm getting a lot of nicknames out of this pairing. That's good. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm chewing now. I was gonna ask you my question. Mm -hmm. Um the first part of it was. When you're doing, well, back it up. So when I, uh, with the make your own uh, charcuterie boards, meat and cheese, when you're like helping people create their own, um, I always go to like Whole Foods or Sprouts and I always just there's all these cheeses and I try to ask somebody to help me. Mm -hmm. And I just literally like, what do you recommend? And they'll be like, get this, this and this. And I'm like, okay, and I'll take it home and I'll eat it. And I don't know, I, I've never met a cheese I didn't like. Sure. But, one, do you know how many how many different styles or varieties or brand, not brands, but how many different kinds of cheeses yeah. are there? Is there like the actual number? Do you know that? Um, I mean, I do what I think is the right thing. And um, I mean, there's no right or wrong with the cheese board. Like you said, you've never met a cheese you didn't like, so go nuts <laughs> if you want to. Right. Um, but so when I create the kits and deliver them for the classes, I include three cheeses and two meats mm -hmm. um, and I'll have a hard cheese, a soft cheese mm -hmm. and something else kind of in the middle. Okay. Um, and it's always nice to have mixed milk cheeses too. So like mm -hmm. the soft cheese could be a goat cheese and the hard cheese could be like a manchango, which is a sheep's cheese. And then maybe another Gouda or a cheddar, something semi-firm. <clears throat> so the, or like the lovely crumbles, like I said, I like putting the cheese to add texture on the cheese board. Um, so that's kind of my formula. <laughs> and then I'll always include, I typically like to include like a shaved style um, prosciutto kind of meat and or a salami. So I'm going to give away my secrets now. Um, here, oh my God. Um, the, cheese, <laughs> the cheese board community, there's a hashtag called Salami River. And so we all create our cheese boards with the same lovely little river of salami through them. So that's kind hey. of. <laughs> well, I always, whenever I'm making a charcuterie board for like an event or a party or just myself to eat in my yard. I always will like get inspiration from Pinterest and I'm like, ooh, this looks pretty and all that stuff. But there's never any like actual thought behind it besides what it looks like. So I feel like that would be so interesting to learn kind of the mechanics of what tastes, sure. why things should go together. And yeah, y'all should hit Melanie up. So the next time you have to bring the charcuterie board to the <laughs> you know, backyard barbecue, which we're going to have lots of this summer. Yeah. Uh, yours on point i love that i'm very excited about that yeah um, i will just deliver you a charcuterie box and you don't have to, you don't have to do anything that too that's even better actually and the dog thing <laughs> yeah. stop talking and keep eating this uh i know you mentioned you thought you were like i hope we didn't overdo it on the dill or the pickles i don't think you did it at all i think it's amazing and this this might be my favorite one except for the last one has chocolate so <laughs> But, yeah, I saw I saw a comment up there um, that this is a mild meat, and and that kind of leads me into strategies when we're pairing beers with different foods. There's a few different things to to go towards. There was another question about the the fig. Um, so there's 
when I you know pair foods with beer, there's a few different strategies. Some of them are to find like qualities or like flavors, um, similar flavors in between the two things. So in this case, maybe the dill with the cucumber and the pickle. Those there's some definite like you know cross lines between those those things. Um, another thing to keep in mind is pairing intensities together. So you never want to have something that's you know, has a really intense flavor with something with a really light flavor. And that comment about this meat being a mild flavored meat is perfect for a pairing like this because this is a pretty mild flavored beer. I mean, there's kind of a lot going on in there. It's complex, but they're all light flavors. And so keeping that intensity on the same level, I think is important in pairings. And then the third, the third strategy that I like to use is also contrasting flavors. So flavors that you normally wouldn't think go together and try to try to bring those together. Sometimes that's a good strategy and you kind of never know where it's going to, you know, going to take you. And the, the biggest rule though, is just to try different things and, and, you know, and see what you like and see what you think goes, you know, goes well together, but it's, it's a fun process to go through for sure. I fully agree with that. And I, I would say, I would just add too that, there's really no wrong answer, whatever you're going to want to pair with. Um, especially if, if you like it, then that's amazing. You like it. Some Everybody has a different palate and different tastes. So, um, you know, if you think it's going to go good, try it out. Uh, oh, we haven't made the dog box live yet. It's going up this week, probably by Friday. Sorry. Ooh, good, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Friday. And we can, and that's a good question. That'd be a really good Father's Day gift, even if you're yeah. a dog father. So <laughs> yeah. dog fathers out there, we're also and where can they? And it's what's your website? I think it Kate will throw it up too. It's yep. Meet the retail us because I will get it wrong. She's meatboard.com. I was a good Yeah. So and we are working on putting together a um, a Father's Day special. I'm trying to work with a local vendor. Um, to do a grazing box and socks package. So you could get a special Father's Day box and a cool pair of socks that are uh, oh, from good. Artisan. Um, still working out some kinks, so I haven't uh, advertised it yet, but that will be coming up. But we also, you know, our normal grazing boxes are a great gift as well. So yeah. just keep on, on our socials and our website over the next couple week or so, and we've got lots of things coming up. <laughs> Perfect. So guys, remember, if your dad or your baby dad or your dog dad likes meat and cheese or just cheese or all of the above, yeah. uh, that's a great Father's Day gift. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, any more questions you want to get to? I know there's a couple other things people are talking about. Oh. I, have, I have another cheese question. Ooh, I've made cheese a couple of times. It's been a while, but I used to make cheese back in the day. You made cheese? Yeah. You make everything. I forget. If you guys don't know us about Jason, he's like a, he's like the most one of the most creative people I know. He makes everything. Food is insane. All the food things he makes. So it doesn't surprise me he made cheese. <laughs> he's also like an insane runner. He runs like. 10 miles at 5 a.m. every morning. That's one thing. But he makes all of his kids Halloween costumes. They're always like an egg or something insane and creative and awesome. And you're a crazy cook. That's where I was going with whatever I've been saying. Sorry, I've had a few beers now. Uh, you're, an insane, crazy, you're a crazy cook. And tell us about making cheese. Well, I, don't, I don't want to tell about making cheese. I've made cheddar a few times. I've made some beer cheddars and stuff like that and some you know fun stuff. But it's been a while. But my question was about Havarti. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a medium cheese to me. Um, and I know from making cheddar that, you know, lots of pressure in the process is what, you know, gets that hardness um, mm -hmm. partially. But with the Havarti, do you, do you know, Melly? I don't know. This might be a technical cheese question. Um, sure. But do you know how that's made? Or is it a long-aged Cheese, because I know the cheddars usually are aged for quite a while, but I don't know about Havarti really. I don't know the answer to that. That's okay. <laughs> I know that it's Danish, um, and I don't. I don't think that Havarti is going to be aged that long. I mean, you you do obviously still press it and age it a little while, because that's how all cheese is made. Um, but it's got more of like a spongy, soft 
texture to it, which is delicious. Um, makes it a, a little bit hard to cut. So that's a that's one that every time that I'm I'm putting Havarti on my cheese board, while I love it, if you're trying to cut a straight and exact line, it kind of wiggles away from you. <laughs> you know, like, so um, I don't I don't know part of the uh, aging process. I would imagine that it's somewhere in the like three to five months age. The kind of texture you get with those types of cheeses. So that's awesome. I didn't mean to put, put you on the spot. I just I, I love well, okay. I don't know that much about I, it. I, I am a texture a, it's like not a <laughs> yeah, it's got great flavor, but like that texture, it's not too hard, but it's kind of like that medium softness. I love that. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Well. How do you get the cucumber flavor in beer? Yep, that's a good question. So um, we've we've played around with cucumber in, in beers a, a handful of times. And, man, like I said earlier, it's a, a little goes a long way for sure. We've done fresh cucumber juice um, in kind of in the conditioning process. We've also done actually pureed fresh cucumbers um, kind of in the in the very end conditioning process as well and there's there's some moments with beer and cucumber where that flavor of time can turn with fresh cucumber um there's there's just some chemical reaction in the beer in the cucumber where the flavor just hits a spot in the aging process after maybe the beer has been out for a month or six weeks and it just kind of turns and gets real funky in a not so great way and so we've, we've kind of steered away from that. Um, but this is actually a, a cucumber concentrate. So, um, you know, like I said, using that, that fresh tends to not last as long. And the cucumber concentrate comes, comes in really nicely. But, man, it really does not take much. It's really, really easy to go overboard with the cu cucumber flavor. And the difficult thing in this beer is to try to balance those flavors to try to get – the lime to still exist and be there, but also have the cucumber with it and kind of balance those flavors. And um, I'm pretty happy with the, the way it turned out. I think you get both of them pretty nice. Oh, I think it's perfect. Totally filled exactly the right amount of cucumber in here. It's delicious. And I agree yeah. with, I saw somebody's comment that said this should be uh, seasonal every summer. And I, I fully agree. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Think about that. Yeah, great question. Uh, I love this comment about the pickles because the pickles are delicious <laughs> and so yeah. goes, if you now hear barking it's my neighbor's dog and i have no control over it so i feel like you're allowed very 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 deep dog bark while the dog needs some sharp poochery yeah he needs some yeah. <laughs> come over and be like wednesday's at five because you can keep the dog inside thank you <laughs> that's too bad we get it we're all well, this we're all at home. This is how yeah, everybody knows. My my dog was at my feet trying to eat something from me, but he can't be on camera because he's countertop blocks him. He's oh, who's like a meat cheese question? <laughs> what do you use the most with your business? What meat and cheese is like the most popular sure. or your favorite? How do you just decide? Yeah, so I try to keep things as like generally friendly um, for most palates. I have gotten requests for like some real like moldy blue cheese, which I think is delicious, but not everybody does. Um, so I'll try to accommodate those requests when I get those, but I don't put those in everything because I know that not everybody loves that type of cheese. So usually, especially lately when I've been doing a lot of small and two person boxes, each of those boxes will contain two kinds of meat and two kinds of cheese. So I like to have a soft kind of spreadable cheese, like a like either a goat cheese or a brie um, as one of the cheeses. And then I'll do another like semi-firm cheese that uh, if anybody was on the last uh, charcuterie and beer pairing, you had that sage derby, that green cheese, that makes an appearance in almost every single box. It's really popular, it's really delicious. It's got that buttery cheddar flavor with a really herby like undertone. Um, so I will try to have things that will taste good on their own and good with the meats and the other cheeses. I almost always include the fig jam 
Yeah. Um, that's just one of my favorites. Yummy. I've had a couple of uh, different jams, like a balsamic onion jam go in there. Uh, over the holidays, I was doing like an orange marmalade because that was uh, citrusy and that's in season. Um, and I, I generally like to include a salami so I can get my hashtag salami river going. Uh, also, uh, like I said, we can eat like a prosciutto. Sometimes I'll do a hard salami or like the uh, peppered salami like we had at the last pairing as well. That makes an appearance in a lot of boxes too. So. Oh, awesome. I love that. Every box also always contains fresh fruit, dried fruit, crackers, bread. We just partnered with um, a local baker called Sweets and Sourdough. And so they've been providing us the artisan baguettes, which are just amazing wow. so baguettes. Um, and then a jam, pickles or olives. Um, and then I'll always include like little chunks of dark chocolate in every box too, because you gotta end your charcuterie with something sweet. Yes. Oh my gosh, everything you said has made me so excited. <laughs> um, I have two things really quick before we go on to our next pairing. One, yeah. happy birthday, Robert. I see you in the comments that you say it's, it's your birthday. This is an amazing, you, your words. Happy birthday to me. Here it is. Great way to spend it. Thank you for having us be a part of your birthday. Happy birthday yeah. from all of us. We appreciate you joining us and we're glad to spend your birthday with you for an hour virtually. <laughs> um, that's number one. Number two, before we get going, uh melanie jason what is your if you had to pick one cheese that's your favorite cheese what would you put just in and not have to be with our pairing but just if you had to, you could only eat one cheese for the rest of your life because it was your favorite cheese what would you pick and you guys tell us in the comment what your favorite cheese if you can only have one cheese for the rest of your life or not and you just ate one mine's brie so i'll start <laughs> Um, yeah, I, you know, I probably six months ago might have picked Brie, uh, but then I eat it almost every day. <laughs> so I don't know that I will want to keep that going. I will pick um, Burrata. Bur Ooh, yeah, a really oh like creamy, soft Burrata is probably what I could eat for the rest Ooh. of my life. In no other cheese. We got some Gouda. We got some dill cheese. Blue, yeah. blue, blue Gouda, cheese. Gouda's up there. Blue cheese is the only cheese I'm actually. I'll eat a blue cheese. Blue cheese is my favorite. Jason, you got a favorite cheese? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with the okay. two part. I'm gonna go with the two part answer on this one. Okay, so, fine. Um, cheese, whatever. The first, the first part for me is gonna be, and, I'm, and we're talking about beer in in uh, in, in cheese mm -hmm. pairing right now. So, Pecorino Toscano for mm -hmm. me. Uh, I love that cheese. It's an Italian sheep's cheese, and it goes so great with like an amber beer. Our pretzel assassin is amazing with that cheese, and I love the flavor of that cheese. I don't, I don't get it a lot. You know, it's not, it's not super, super common. So, um, okay, you know, that's that's kind of my like, you know, spoil myself kind of cheese, uh, especially when it comes to pairing with beer. Yeah, you know, like I said, it goes great with um, ambers, barley wines. Um, the porters and stouts a little are a little, uh, I think, a little elevated on on the intensity level for it. But um, but you know, with a, a barley wine or with really caramelly beers, I think a pecorino toscano is awesome. I, I absolutely love that. But on an everyday basis, my go-to cheese is Munster. I don't know, that's just my thing. I'm what? Really, really into it. I love the Munster. Munster. Mun I thought you said mustard. Okay. Oh, and there, now my mom is chiming in that baby Swiss. There's Hi, baby Swiss from, from Guggensburg cheese in, in Ohio is, um, it's kind of a delicacy from where, where I grew up. I grew, I grew up in a really heavily uh, uh, populated Amish area and they make amazing cheese. So, um, baby Swiss from yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We could have done that Pecorino with the pretzel assassin last time. I think the smoked Gouda went really well, but We'll have to <laughs> next time. Next time. Yeah. And he's got some jokes behind the scenes. Uh, why I'm saying that. Shout out to Andrew Klein, who is our marketing director and runs every single live stream that we've done, which is like 30 plus in the past nine weeks. It's crazy. Uh, so shout out to him. No one knows, but he's Oh, we lost him. Oh, he removed me. I was out. Oh, 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 back. 
If anybody knows how to, to navigate the Salami River, it's definitely Andrew Klein. Hey! <laughs> I, don't know, I don't get it, but I like it. Uh, he did say that your new name, Jason, is Baby Swiss, and we're going to thank your mom for that. So Thanks, Mom. I'm into it. Judy, thanks for joining us. I know she's probably been on every single one of these. I think my mom is out there, too. So shout out to all the moms supporting their children and joining. We love you. Um, all right. Well, I think we're... Smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Um uh I just wanted to really oh before we moved on, I wanted to do this. Shout out to this beer, Colored Champion. If you haven't tried it yet, now you have. Oh my face. Um shout out to Austin for the art. And just so you guys know, uh it's I could be wrong. AK, tell me if this is wrong, but 20% of the proceeds go to frontline workers. Which is Frontline Foods Denver, yeah. Frontline Foods, which pr provides meals for frontline workers. Thank you, Jason, for that correction. Um, it's available in our tap rooms. If, if you loved it, please, please, please keep picking it up. Keep supporting Frontline Foods Denver and our front. We again, thank you to our frontline workers, which is obviously people in healthcare, grocery stores, janitors, delivery people, people that are driving around so sweet street sweeping and picking up our garbage thank you guys so much for doing everything during this crazy time we can't thank you enough i'm sure i missed some frontline workers out there but uh thank you guys so much uh thank you to frontline foods denver for all the work that they do we're happy to be able to support thank you austin for creating this amazing art so yeah snag these uh the more crawlers are available in our tap rooms all summer long i think hopefully for a long time while supplies last i know we sold out but we got way more in now i was at our plat street tap room the past two days and we were stocked and loaded for you guys to uh ah this photo is one of my favorite i love it yeah um so yeah shout out to all of that if you still have some color champions cucumber lime lager there it is to finish let's cheers Quick little online virtual cheers, and let's all finish that beer quick. Oh, there's a you don't have to finish your comment that I couldn't agree more with that says, "You guys have been nailing it during the pandemic. Great products and events." So I couldn't agree more. That you guys the the beers that you've been putting out have been so relevant and so delicious, and the events have been so much fun. Well, thank you, Melanie. I appreciate your help. Just so you guys know, Melanie was our first. Keep this comment up there, okay? Because I'm going to go to that next. Melanie was our first. I emailed Melanie, and within 24 hours, literally within five minutes, she got back to me. And within 24 hours, our first pairing was born. And we had a pairing set, and we knew all the information, and she was just so on it. And she really helped us create this whole series, which is amazing. So we were so excited to do this again with her. So, Melanie, thank you for that. I know somebody just said that they've been to every single pairing we've done, which is like seven or eight. I don't even know. I've lost that's so, great. so that's amazing. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you guys for supporting us. Um, and anyone that says they're excited about this label, um, we actually have prints. There are two individual prints of the woman and the man. They're for sale at our tap rooms. I'm pretty sure you can buy them on our website as well. Oh, you can buy them at this link that you see there too. Um, but the, it's, are they, AK, are they on our, I don't know if you can just write yes, if they're on our website, but they're definitely available if you stop by our tap rooms to grab a beer on the patio, or just you can grab to-go crawlers, and they ha we have prints. Uh, I know that then you don't have to pay for shipping, and you just take your print home with you. We have them right there for you to grab. So definitely, if you're interested, if you know a frontline worker that would love one of these, um, the prints are available at our tap room. Oh, good question, Nick. Before I'm really dying to go on this next pairing, but I'm going to answer. Um, we have virtual pairings. I'm just going to kind of give you a sneak peek planned out for the next few weeks. Uh, our goal is to probably do them for most of summer since we're not going to be able to do any, well, as of right now, we're not uh, going to be able to do any large in-person events. So up and coming, we're actually doing our second beer baking coffee or third beer baking coffee event. It's going to be next Saturday, the 13th. That is live. Tickets are available. A little different than a pairing, but we do breakfast beers and bacon and burritos and coffee. And it's amazing. We 
do a live stream too if you if you love our faces. Um, our next thing up event after that is actually going to be a painting trip so there won't be a food pairing oh minute made ipa that's one of our uh breakfast beers we'll do a baking coffee after that we're going to have a paint and sip so i don't know if you've ever been to a paint and sip night where you go and you paint and you drink wine and beer we're going to bring that to you virtually with our summer mix pack which is tart delight princess yum yum juicy freak juicy ipa and uh maui express coconut ipa and we're actually gonna do a live painting of the Denver skyline hosted with, uh, oh shit, I'm forgetting it right now. The Paint and Sip uh, Highlands, Paint and Sip Highlands, something like that. Uh, I'm missing her exact name, so I'm butchering that, my bad. Uh, they're gonna do a live virtual painting class. So you guys can all do it together. It's gonna be awesome. You do, everything is take home. It's like 55 bucks and you get a 12 pack of beer. It's an awesome deal. That's for two people, by the way. Uh, and then after that, we're doing take home, make your own pizzas. Ooh. We're partnering with Lucky Pie, three mini pizzas, all the toppings on the side, and we're gonna all the instructions of bake pizzas at home. We're pairing them with beers, so that one's gonna be a little more interactive for you. You're gonna get to learn how to like toss dough and tons of shit. So those ones are locked in all through June, July. We're working on a Fourth of July take home pack, and then some extra stuff since then. Also, if you have any good ideas of things you want to see in the pairing, sound off in the comments, send me an email. Okay, I'm going to shut up and we're going to move on to the next pairing. <laughs> Take it away, Jason. Awesome. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. Ah, nice job, Devin. I can't, I can't ah. really remember all that. No Mike sorry. even asked about Hawaiian pizza, but I need to comment because week one, I talked about this. Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza is not one of the options, which I'm bummed about. but. Ooh. I actually is giving us three of their bomb pizzas. Like, it's like a margarita, a pepperoni sausage, and a veggie or something like that. They're gonna be bomb. I promise you. Even though it's not Hawaiian. Okay, we're keeping it going. Okay, <laughs> let's drink some graham cracker porter. Oh, sorry. Ugh. Awesome. So <laughs> graham cracker porter was the third or fourth beer we Four. ever made. Fourth beer that we ever made at Denver Beer Company. And this is a really, I mean, very iconic Denver beer, very iconic Colorado beer, uh, really fun beer. We call it a campfire in a can. So this is a traditional brown porter. So lots of biscuit flavors in here. We've got some caramel malt, some chocolate malt, just a you know, little, little hint of roastiness. And then we bring that all together with with the flavors of graham crackers. So we get that little bit of honey, um, maybe just a you know slight biscuity with like that those bready notes, uh, and that it really all comes together in this nice, actually very drinkable beer. A lot of people think of dark beers as being very rich and very sweet, and from a flavor standpoint, yeah, they are definitely rich beers. They they have a lot of flavor. There's some coffee notes in there, some caramel, chocolate, all those things. But this is actually a fairly dry beer. It's not as sweet as you think. It, it, a lot of people look at the color and they go, oh, that looks really sweet. And a lot of dark beers are sweet, but this is a pretty dry beer. So um, this beer gets fermented uh, pretty low, which dries it out. Uh, the residual sugar is, is not you know, very, very high in this beer, but nice big flavors. And uh, man, lots and lots and lots of fun things that you can pair with this beer for sure. Oh my gosh, cheers. 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 I always think that dark beers are like winter beers, but this honestly is one that you could drink all year round. It's a great summer beer as well. Um, and I, I mean, I, and I love the beer. It pairs well you okay, with Devin? s'mores. I think Devin. Is it loud? Thunder? Sorry. Thunder crack, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it too, but you're outside. It's probably way worse. Oh God, it was really loud. It's like right above it. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> it's not even raining. Um, um, so we're pairing this at, like with every dark beer. I like to pair a really bold cheese. Um, the last one we did the um, pretzel assassin with a smoked gouda that tasted really, really great. Um, so what we have here is a cave aged cheese. It's one of a kind. The brand is called Karst, K-A-R-S-T, 
and they're the only people that are doing this right now, but it's a mix of cheddar and Gruyere and it's cave aged, which gives it like a really dense, funky, bold smell and flavor. So I think that's really gonna bring out a lot of like the maltiness in this dark beer and really complement it very well. So dig in. Well, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I love the flavors that cheese. There's that really big like earthiness and then it's a little, the cheese comes all across a little sweet to me. And I think the flavors of that with the caramel and the chocolate in the, the graham cracker porter, Man, they're fantastic and nice work too on the um, uh, the intensity. You know, again, matching those intensities, you want to have that really intense flavor to go with the yeah. intense flavors of the Grand Cracker Porter. Really, that's a really great pairing. Yeah. This wouldn't be the best beer to pair with like a Havarti, which is really mild and mellow, but exactly having, having a nice bold cheese. What really goes well with dark beer, which I did at one pairing, is a really nice Stilton, like really nice blue cheese. Um, but again, not everybody loves that so i got the feedback of like can i have something else <laughs> so, uh, try it i beg you even if you don't like blue cheese give a blue cheese a piece of chocolate and a dark beer a shot just once it'll change your life no, that sounds awesome so we're all paired with a just a mild chorizo it's got a little bit more of a flavor punch than something like the, the prosciutto or the speck that we had earlier, just to kind of balance out um, the bold flavors of everything else. And then since we have such a lovely, not very sweet, but sort of s'moresy, desserty beer, I chocolate dipped the apricot uh, to pair with that. Cause you gotta have dessert with your dessert, right? Bless you girl. It is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, accidentally ate a couple of my uh I chocolate covered apricots first this, is, this might be my favorite mm -hmm. i honestly thought the cucumber or pickle one would be but i lied this is chocolate's amazing um they really do keep getting better oh my gosh so good i don't know if i could pick a favorite actually i really like all of these pairings yeah i want to ask does anybody have a do you have a favorite one two or three or if you remember what was in them, <laughs> so, do you have a favorite? I think my favorite is going to be the third one. Jason, do you have a favorite? Man, <clears throat> that's hard too. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I do. I do like this third one so far. I really like how uh, the chorizo has got just a just a little hint of spiciness, and I think it goes really well with the graham cracker porter, like that chocolate flavor with the spice. Man, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's re really mild. It's not real spicy. Just that little hint of spice is great. Oh, the chorizo. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of different forms of chorizo. I think of chorizo as part of my breakfast burrito. Yes. <laughs> Just another beer baking coffee plug since we're on the topic of chorizo. Our burritos that the Mighty Colorado makes for us are chorizo burritos and they're delicious mm -hmm. they're wild Ooh, jason likes number two i'm i'm with number two too i also like number two mm, all good oh robert likes all of them um mm, <laughs> that's so good. there's like a full-on thunder and lightning storm happening like right in my view like the lightning bolts are coming down and then the thunder's happening so that's exciting. that's what my facial expressions have been for the past five minutes <laughs> I've been hearing the thunder outside my windows at the same time I see your reactions. So yeah. I don't know what's happening? <laughs> no rain. Dry yeah. light. I'm from Oregon, so we didn't really have thunder and lightning. And if we did, like it was like once a year, and everybody was really afraid of it. So living in Colorado and watching lightning hit the ground in front of me is like mm -hmm. a really, really wild thing to be used to. But I'm always like, woo, lightning. Yeah, there goes him. Um, I saw a question above asking about if we were gonna have a Father's Day pairing or Father's Day something, it was like five minutes ago, but the answer is yes. It's not a pairing, but we are gonna announce it in the next couple of days, but we are gonna have a Father's Day pack. And we're actually, I'm just gonna spoil it now, I don't really care. We're gonna these uh, amazing uh, like six pack lunch type like beer coolers 
from Mountain Smith, which is a company based out of Col uh, Colorado, out of Boulder. And they're going to be embroidered with Denver Beer Co. on them. And they're cool. They're super sweet. I'm like, I'm not a dad, but I want one. And we're actually making, Jason can speak to this, a dad beer. You can say dad bod beer. It's yeah, fine. Dad. Oh, shit. We're in front of the screen. AK, can you fix that? <laughs> yeah, no, we're making we're making an IPA. Pet teaser. We're making yeah. a dad bod beer. Dad bod IPA. It's coming. Yeah, um, it's coming. It's an awesome beer. How else do you get a dad bod but with a hey. yes. yeah. oh, oh, yeah. dad bod? Oh, to the dad bod. There it is. So yeah, we've got we've got some of our favorite dad jokes here, and uh, yeah, the dad bod IPA is coming. Um, we've got That's some so funny. It's a really, it's a really cool, unique beer. Um, really fun hops. We use some Independence hops, Pacific Crest, some really kind of unique, fun, flavorful hops um, in, a, in a really classic American IPA for all the dad bods out there. Yes. So uh, dads of DBC, which should now be a hashtag. Um, Are you um, the calendar? It's going to be this really cool Mountain Smith, which is a local Colorado brand, like I said, out of Boulder. And it's going to come with a dad bod crowler and a six pack of your choice, any six pack you want. So we're going to pre sell those tickets. Dads of DBC. Yes. I love it. I want to be because I want dad bod beer and I want this cooler. Um, we have a limited amount because Mountain Smith literally hooked us up with every uh, cooler they had left in this style. I was like, I need all of them, hold them for me. So we're gonna have three different colorways, like blue, a tan, and a green. Very limited quantity. So watch for that if you're into getting that for your dad or for yourself. Um, it's gonna launch in the, uh, maybe either Friday or Monday, somewhere around there. So watch, it'll go up on our social media channels. If you don't already follow them, please do. Uh, and you'll get all your info that way. Uh, but yeah, that's our Father's Day gift. Uh, it's gonna be really, really excited about it, and I'm not obviously not a dad. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's continue move talking about what we're doing here. Uh, I think the overall favorite was three. We had some twos, we had some ones. They were all delicious. Again, mm -hmm. this was amazing. Um, I liked everything. I thought it was great. You know, I'm like, I like all the beers. You're right. No, that was awesome. Great job, Melanie. Thanks to Cheese Meat Board so much. So so glad to have you back, and, and you guys do such a fantastic job. Cannot wait to get the sharp sharp puchery for, for, for sharp puchery puppy. That's an awesome idea. I absolutely love that. And thanks to everybody for joining us again. So awesome. We love the support. It really means a lot to us. We have, Melanie, do you have any final words? And then I have two things to leave us with. Oh, I uh, just thank you for having me back. This is a great opportunity. Um, I I love the tastings. I would, if you did this with somebody that's not me, I would 100% be involved <laughs> in eating it and drinking it. Um, so thank you for the opportunity. It's been great. And, um, and, and thanks to all of not only the Denver Beer Co. fans and family, but all of Denver and Colorado who's been very supportive of my small business during our weird quarantine shutdown. Um, it's actually been very busy for me and I hope that it gets more busy and I'm happy to provide everybody with like a fancy little date night or a gift for your mom or your dad or your whoever needs a gift. I love that. Well, thank you again. We It was almost, it was what, April 1st that we did the first one of these. So it's been two months exactly. I think it's like nine actual weeks, which is crazy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, Melanie. This sure. is amazing. We literally have somebody in the comments asking when is the third meat cheese pairing coming up this summer. Check us in July and August. We'll be back. Um, <laughs> two things to leave you guys with. Number one, during our first kind of quick talk about what's going on in the world today, I saw multiple people in the comments that were saying vote, 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 vote. Denver Beer Co. and Cerveceria, Colorado, urge you to fucking vote. I'm sorry for the language, but we have stickers. We It's one thing that we've been saying for at least two or three years now. Please, please, please get out there and vote, no matter where you are in the country, who you want to vote for. I don't care. Just make your voice heard, and please, please, please vote. Um, the second thing, I have three things now. The second thing, uh, our upcoming events, our beer baking coffee is live. Our paint and sip is gonna be live tomorrow or Friday. Dad is, our Father's Day will be live next week. 
We have events coming every week, uh, literally one a week. We're gonna continue to do virtual events. Our tap rooms are open. We're excited to bring you in. Uh, our capacity is like a third or even a fourth of what it used to be because we are really, really strictly following um, our governor and our mayor's uh, social distancing policies. We are wearing masks, we are wearing gloves, but our bartenders and our hostesses and everyone in our tap rooms and Jason who is making our beers and all of our brewers, we're excited to welcome, welcome you guys back. We are very strict on clean, being cleanly, and we do all hands-free ordering and paying. We are ready to have you guys back. Please come and visit us at the tap rooms. With that, we will still be doing events for those of you that one, may not feel comfortable coming yet, and two, we can only bring about a fourth of the people that we would love to have. So we're gonna continue to do take-home events, virtual events, and hopefully for this summer, we'll be able to get through this together. Thank you guys, that's my last thing. Just thank you guys so much for joining us. I know the world is crazy right now. Nobody knows what to do or what to say or how to act. Vote, take care of the people around you. We love you, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. Again, everything we said at the beginning this through whole thing is from all of Denver Beer Co. and Cerveceria Colorado. We love you, I don't know if anyone else has anything else if you have beer left i cheers you we appreciate you more than you know and we will be back here at noon on saturday the 13th for beer making coffee if you would love to join us grab uh the tickets thank you so much jason melanie thank you for joining us thank thanks you. Kevin. Can't love wait you all. cheers thank you.